Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema magazine experience at the AFCI Pavilion. Caroline Norbury, Chris Moll, Kay Elliott. Uh, firstly, uh, congratulations on what's still a very new adventure for you guys. Um, tell me first, I like to start at the beginning, what were you doing before you were CEO of Creative England? Like, what, what was the position that you had that led to this? Okay, so my background is as a producer. Um, and prior to running um, Creative England, I ran a um, uh, I ran a regional screen agency, which was based in Bristol for the whole of the Southwest. And before that, I was working in television as a commissioner and um, within development. Uh, I started off as a producer as well. I sort of uh, was one of the, the principals of Ardman in Bristol. Uh, so most of my early career was spent in animation. And then I uh, moved into live action, mainly on the funding side. So I sort of crossed over from being a you know, poacher to turning a gamekeeper. Uh, ran production development funds in the northwest of England, came back to Bristol and did the same there, and then subsequently joined Creative England as head of talent. Um, I previous to Creative England, I worked at a regional screen agency, and prior to that, a regional screen agency. Um, so I've covered a couple of regions, and I've also done bits and bobs in production as well in TV. So that's pretty interesting. You all had the experience at the regional level. Obviously, Creative England is meant to, in some in some parts, kind of replace that with this umbrella organization and stop all these kind of smaller bodies from operating independently. Was that seen to you guys as an opportunity or a loss in terms of the structure? I think that everybody would recognize that if you're going to give a really good service, particularly um, to your constituency who are interested in terms of filming on location, then you need to have lots and lots of good boots on the ground. So. Um, uh, so, that, so in terms of how that worked in the regions, that was great. You know, that was really, really good because you did have, maybe not enough, but you had sufficient boots on the ground. Um, what was difficult, however, was when you wanted to talk nationally because what would happen is that you would end up having competitions between different parts of the country. And frankly, people just want to come to the UK first and foremost. That's, our big, that's the big objective that we have. And then when they come, we have to find them the right place. And so in many ways, um, it's actually, it's much better for productions because what we try and do is we don't have that inter-regional rivalry anymore. Uh, so we try and find the best place for them. We have a full staff team, and, but obviously we work very, very closely with um, all, to, all types of you know, lo local crew, local services, local partners. So again, the, the, the strong thing about the service that we offer is we do have very, very strong partnerships with regional authorities, local authorities, as well as local companies. So do you think that this shift, and this is applies on all levels, whether it's locations or talent, is more geared toward um, potentially bringing in like uh, productions from outside of England to come shoot in the to come shoot in England, or is it or is it still well suited to accommodating talent from within your areas shooting in your areas? It's absolutely both. Um, I think. Um as Caroline's expressed, in terms of being more joined up from and when you're outside the country internationally, I think that works really well because there's no longer lots and lots of voices at the table trying to say come to Gloucestershire when no one's ever heard of it. You know, you can actually say come to England. I think that works really well. But I think in terms of the um, local and national UK infrastructure and the industry that's in the re in in the UK, we're absolutely there for that. So I think that equally they're both important because they feed each other. So it's really important that from a crew perspective that we're able to build up our crew infrastructure and that they have opportunities to work locally which is often on drama commercials documentaries etc and then obviously to feed into that international feature when they kind of parachute in to be able to have that infrastructure there for them to be able to work on so I think you wouldn't be able to do one without the other. I think our, our commitment to sort of developing indigenous talent and indigenous production is the same as it ever was through the old regional screen agencies so it's a mixed economy for us we recognize that um, that actually you need both. I think the thing that's changing a bit with how we approach the talent development is we're trying to get them to think a lot more internationally actually because I think this idea of sort of you know a sort of little Englander almost approach has been one of the things that's been deviled the, the UK film industry in general really you know we're not we're not the greatest co-production partners that there ever were 
you know, partly that's due to things like the tax credit that maybe needs to be looked at and things like that. But I think just generally having a producer base and a talent base that's a lot more outwardly looking, um, looking to actually partner with people and also have stories that are able to travel much more is a sort of key part of how we want to develop talent going forward. In terms of finding talent, are you finding that you, the, the, the talent that gets the exposure are the people that are amb ambitious enough to find you and hound you? or the people that are just have product that speaks for itself? No, I think, it, I mean, it is a process. You, you know, you have to build long-term relationships with that talent. But, you know, just look at some of the products here now. I mean, Ben Wheatley is the classic example. Obviously, he's got sightseers, you know, in, in, in I think it's directors for night. Um, and he lives in Brighton. So he is in our patch. His producer lives in Dorset. So talent like that effectively wants to ultimately live and work outside of London. So it's very important that we provide and infrastructure and also just relationships that allow them to do that. So it's not always about just sort of giving money. There's always a sense that actually you're there to just write a check. It's a much broader sense of actually what you're looking to do is establish relationships with people and connect them actually. So you're, you know, that, that's what I suppose you'd call an executive producer function, although I don't like that because it's not that, but it is about sort of adding value to the, to the check that you write. But are you guys also actively looking outside your current pool of people like at commercial directors, at theatre directors, other people, or or is it just the people that happen to apply, they're the no, people? No, I think it's not. I mean, if we just sat back and waited for people to come to us, I mean, you're, ne you're never going to find the real gems just doing that. We're much more proactive. I mean, things that we do, particularly around things like Eye Features, which is one of the big projects that we do, which is a lower budget sort of film initiative, that's really about going out and finding that talent and encouraging them to come to us. So we, we I think... Historically, again, I think some of the RSAs, the regional screen agencies, were more proactive in that than others. And that meant that there was a sense that there was a bit of a postcode lottery sometimes. If you happen to live and work in a region where your regional screen agency wasn't very proactive, then you're at a disadvantage. I think now that we have one unified thing, we are proactive, and that's for everybody, whether they live in Newcastle, Manchester, Bristol or Brighton. Well, obviously, there's also areas within that that have taken their own initiatives to find funding elsewhere, like Yorkshire. Uh, does that mean that they kind of fall outside of the Creative England scope as well? Or? No, not at all. The, the, the people in that region, in a way, uh, you could say actually in a slightly better position because they, have a, they can have a relationship with us and similarly they can have a relationship with Screen Yorkshire. I mean, that's, they very much reconfigure themselves as an investment fund and that's going to be how they interact with producers going forward. I think the service that we offer is a much more rounded and holistic thing. So yes, we have funding, but we're very interested in how we develop people's careers over the longer term. Car uh, Caroline, maybe this one's for you, is that, you know, given what we were just saying, how sometimes now people who want to work outside of London can stay where they are and access you guys, are you feeling like that is your main competition? Like, the, like whether to try and keep keep product or keep product away from London necessarily or... no that would be ridiculous <laughs> um, I think that we, we I don't I hope we haven't got a culture which is about keeping anybody from anywhere it's an international industry so you know uh, it's really important for us that we we attract production in from all over the world and it's really important for us that in order to have sustainable companies outside of London yes they need to have a relationship with London but they need to have a relationship with New York LA Delhi wherever you know um, so it, it, we what we need to do is to is to hopefully higher the bar and raise ambitions because in order to be uh, in order to really make successful films you have to be able to make them for an international audience um, yes it, I mean that's not to say we don't want to, uh, for people to make films for a domestic audience obviously we do but if we want to grow sustainable businesses then there there's a level of ambition which is it which th those companies and that talent needs to have so we I mean you know we're really not about we're, we're <laughs> We're not protectionist in any way whatsoever. So what would you say so far, even though you've only had a short lifespan so far, but what's been the greatest impact that you've found that you've had? I think people find it very refreshing to come through one front door. Um, I, think that, I think they find that really, it's simple. I think as well the fact that uh, we do have people who are based locally. We have offices in five or six centres um, around, around England. So there are, there are people locally as well as there being one national front door. I think as well that we've got a really fantastic team. You know, we've got a really, really good team of, of people. We all get on really well. 
you know, we're a very happy ship. And therefore, people quite like working with a happy ship <laughs> because we don't have that sort of rivalry. We don't need to necessarily compete because we're, to quote the phrase, very current at the moment in the UK, we're all in it together.